So you're at your friend's house celebrating his success at some organization and you're having a great time. But then all of a sudden you feel hungry so you decide to eat something. You move to a corner and find a table full of yummy food but the thing that catches your eye is a huge cake and you decide to get a piece of it. But then you realize you're not alone. There are a lot of people and they all want a fair share from that cake. So is there a way of dividing that cake in such a manner that each individual is content with their share? Well, yes. And that's where Sperner's Lemma comes in. It has proved the existence of an envy feed division in a distribution of goods. Fair division problems have long been discussed in economics and using this lemma, we can guarantee that a division exists where each person is content with his or her share and no one has a tendency to envy another person for their share. So to understand the concept of Sperner's Lemma, it is very important for us to understand three of its major components. The theory lies on. This includes simplicities, triangulations, and Spurner's colorings. So to start with, a simplex is a generalization of a triangle to any dimension. For example, as shown here, zero simplex is a point one simplex is a line segment, and two simplex is a triangle, and three simplex is a tetrahedron, and so on. So we can't fully represent the higher dimension of analogs within a 3D space, but we can still define them mathematically. In order to think about high dimensional simplices, we can note that a simplex or line segment also contains points. Two simplex or triangle also contains line segment and points. And a three simplex or tetrahedron contains triangles, line segment and points. What do all of the simplices in one or higher dimension contains? point and line segments, or in other words, vertices and edges. So this means we can draw out the vertices and edges of an n-dimension simplex and get a graph representation of it. So as shown here, we can see a complete graph of x vertices represent the vertices and edges of an x minus one dimensional simplex. So for example, the graph of three vertices where k is three represents the edges of two dimensional simplex or a triangle. Whereas the graph of four vertices represents three dimensional simplex, which is a tetrahedron. We could also represent the vertices of a four-dimension simplex by a complete graph on five vertices. That's all from my side. Durek Sakina now will be talking about triangulations. Thank you. Next is triangulations. A triangulation of a shape means dividing a shape into triangles. Triangulations can be done on squares, triangles and can even be extended to higher dimensions. Triangulating a 3D shape means splitting the shape into tetrahedrons. One requirement of triangulations is that each triangle in the triangulation either shares no vertices, shares one vertex or shares a common edge with another triangle in the triangulation. Triangulating a line segment means splitting it into smaller line segments. Sperner's lemma states that every Sperner coloring of a triangulation of an n-dimensional simplex contains a cell colored with a complete set of colors. Sperner colorings have been used for effective computation of fixed points and in root finding algorithms and are applied in fair division algorithms. A Sperner coloring can be constructed such that fully labeled simplices correspond to fixed points of a given function. By making a triangulation smaller and smaller, one can show that the limit of the fully labeled simplices is, is exactly the fixed point. So let's have a look at this example. 
Uh, for the one-dimensional case, we have k plus one vertices lined up on a straight line. Each vertex is supposed to be colored one of two colors, either blue or green, and we impose a particular boundary condition, which says that the two of boundary vertices must be of opposite colors. This lemma states that out of the k subintervals. There must be at least one subinterval whose both endpoints have opposite colors. So, for example, this segment over here has both endpoints of opposite colors. There has to be an odd number of such intervals. For instance, if you have a triangulation of a simplex, such as the triangulation of a triangle like this, then a spurner coloring is one in which we give a different color to each original vertex of a triangle and then color any vertices of our smaller triangles that happen to fall on an edge of our original triangle according to a special rule. A vertex V that falls on the original triangle edge A and B must be colored with either the color of, color of vertex A or the color of vertex B. In other words, if one of the vertices of our small triangle falls on an edge of our original triangle, it must be colored with one of the colors used on the endpoints of the edge of the original triangle. Now color the smaller triangle vertices that lie within the original triangle, however you would like. Explaining uh, how the Sperner's Lemma, what Sperner's Lemma actually is and how it applies to different cases. Okay, so in a 1D case, uh, basically if we take a line segment and triangulate it, meaning we create different smaller line segments within the bigger segment, and then color the uh, endpoints with different colors, then Sperner's Lemma states that there will be an odd number of color changes, and more specifically, the line segments, uh, which we've divided the original line into, will contain an odd number of line segments with uh, opposite end colors. So in the example picture on our right here, we can see that there's a total of uh, one, two, three, four, and five, five color changes in this example. So uh, just a quick like application, not application, but sort of more relative, relevant, which one which example which we're all familiar with is that if you take an even number and you add an X amount of ones to it, then uh, and then we stop adding ones when we're at an odd number then the total number of uh, ones we will have added will be an odd number uh, so in 2d and higher cases if we take a 2d simplex triangulated and apply spurious colorings then within the bigger triangle there will be at least one triangle in which all vertices will have different colors <clears throat> in uh, higher cases about 3d like such as 4d 5d as many uh, and, and like however many you want. Uh, basically, there will be a simplex after triangulation, which will contain all edges of different colors. Okay, so now briefly we will look at proof of Sperner's lemma using graphs. So on the right, we have an example of a 2D simple, uh, simplex, which has already been triangulated. And basically what's been done is that every single triangle has been given an edge and these edges have been connected based on uh, whether the two triangles, adjacent triangles, share uh, a multicolored edge. So for example, the top two triangles we see, the, they share a multicolored edge of green and red. So they are given an edge between their two respective vertices. And uh, for another example, this, uh, the top most triangle, sub-triangle, and the one to the immediate left of it, they do not share an edge between their vertices as they're both red. So basically we do this and then we also add an additional vertex, a vertex outside and then basically we connect this the outside edge to the inner edges based on whether there's a multicolored boundary edge for that triangle. So for example in the topmost triangle, sub triangle we see that there's a red and green multicolored boundary edge so there's been uh, an addition, I mean a, a connection to the outside vertex. Uh, and for another example, these two on the left left edge, the, the two green vertices, there's no connection to the outside uh, vertex because uh, it's not a multicolored boundary edge. 
so basically after this correction ji yeah, asa raj we find we fill in the inner triangles which have a vertex of degree 3 and basically we find that every single triangle which we've colored in yellow it's a triangle which has a multi all multi colored edges and uh, this is basically proof of schrodinger's lemma using uh, gross theory which we're all familiar with